Today, the 17th ranked Xavier Musketeers coming to town to take on the Georgetown Hoyas. Keep your eye on Rodney Pryor. The transfer and another turnover for the Hoyas. Blew it, leaves it Sumner, the basket for the two-hand flush. Now traveling before he got the basketball to make a pass. Good thinking on his part. Peak again down the lane. Double clutch counted on the foul. L.J. Peak. Through the 1-3-1 one, one zone like that, no problems. Peak with seven points. Down up by a point. Makura deep jump shot and hits. J.P. Makura. Abu. Back door. Peak. Bam! And it's a man-to-man -man switch up. They broke everybody out on the perimeter. Peak oh, lost the ball. It's just sitting there. Bernard to Sumner, and he'll punch it down. Lewis gets a ball to go halfway down. If he was seven for nine, that ball would have gone in for him. Oh, Euro step Sumner, what a play. That's a little faster than a Euro step. Now Xavier gets back into that zone they used in the first half. Well, they got to be aware of Pryor. Govan, Pryor lets it fly, and hits Rodney Pryor. Georgetown looking for a signature conference win. Gaston on the backdoor cut. The Xavier Musketeers come back and win it 81 to 76. Edmund, your teammate Blewett was having trouble scoring the basketball, and you just seemed to take over, especially in the second half. Describe what was going through your mind in the second half. Uh, honestly, I wanted to get uh, Trey going because you know once he get going, it opened the game up for me. But uh, that's uh, we're so versatile. Like we have three scores, so any night one of us can have a bad night, but the other one has stepped up, and that just happened to be me this night. Talk a little bit about your ability. I mean, I was very, very impressed with a couple of things. Number one, your ability to drive the basketball. But when you get into the lane, it appears that you really hunt down the bodies of the defenders so you can get to the line. Yeah, yeah, that's something that I worked on over the summer. Uh, just getting to the free throw line a lot. Uh, free throws get you in the rhythm. So. That's nice. When you played against coming in here today against Georgetown, you knew it would be a difficult game, aggressive. It was a foul plague at the beginning of this game. How did you adjust at the half to kind of work through the foul problems that everybody seemed to have? Uh, Georgetown's a great team. They have a great, lot of great players, so we knew it was going to be a physical game coming to their place, and definitely be, it's going to be hard to beat them, so we just wanted to adjust. Congratulations. Great win. Oh, thank you, sir. Chris, in this first half, I didn't think either team could really get into an offensive flow with all the fouls. How did you make some adjustments at the half to come back? Well, Georgetown was really hurting us with, with drives in the first half, whether we were zone or man. And then we got our pants taken off a couple times in those back doors, which are so famous for. But uh, I think our guys recognized in the second half, we had to do a better job of just guarding the ball in one-on-one -on -one situations. I thought we were a little bit better. Um, we needed to be in order to pull out a win. When you were guarding the ball in that second half, it seemed as if you had your guys just aggressively play defense on the ball but slide back off the ball a little bit to prevent those man uh, cuts to the basket you want to be disruptive it's easier said than done it's like throwing a monkey wrench in, in machinery that's uh, really hard to guard on a two-day turnaround for our team you know all the Princeton effects that, uh, that come with guarding that thing but I thought our guys a lot of times as the game progresses guys start to get a rhythm of weak side flares when they're going to go middle ball screen and hopefully that helped us in the second half Jim on, a, on an afternoon where Blewett just didn't have his game, it happens to good players, a 19-point scorer. The other guys really picked him up, McCure and Sumner in particular. Yeah, I mean, JP had a terrific first half. Edmund had an unbelievable game. Uh, we used his quickness to try to get in the lane and, and help create shots and get to the foul line. We haven't been great getting to the foul line all year, but I thought today for the first time, and that's what good teams do. When one of their better players has an off night, we're able to step up. I thought Sean O'Mara gave us great minutes, so we're happy to come out of the Verizon Center with a win. Congratulations. I thought that was a great win for you. <laughs> Any win in this league on the road is a great win. Thanks, Jim.